Hello and welcome to the Point 99 podcast. We have once again officially hit that midway marker for the season, with this being episode five. I'm not going to lie, season three for me has so far been the most fun to record and produce. And at the same time, it's also been really, really chill. I 1 million percent love every episode that I've produced so far and the guests who have given me their time. But I think in both season one and season two, I really got in my own head about the planning, the preparation, and generally living week to week, stressing about recordings and everything that goes into producing a podcast. Many of the comments so far this season have pointed out how relaxed and more natural episode sound discussions with guests and I think that really goes back to like I've just said having the stresses the pressure and and really being rigid to what I thought I had to do and not just relaxing and going with the flow. As the season progresses for the second half I'm going to have some absolutely banging chats coming up for you in the next couple of episodes. And that includes my superstar returning face for today. Like I mentioned in the last episode, however, many of these guests that are going to be coming up have been pre-recorded. I wanted to get ahead of myself, prepare and just make life a lot easier. But even still, I've listened back. I absolutely adore a lot of the chat that we've had and I can't wait to hear what you guys think as well. I can't get on to my guest for today's episode without first mentioning the amazing response to the last episode, episode four, not just from you guys, the listeners, but also from Chris himself. In truth, Chris was really nervous and really stressed about how the episode was going to turn out and what the feedback was going to be. That's one of the reasons we did a retake and re-recorded his interview. But he has been pleasantly surprised. It's, I'm glad to say he has enjoyed the episode. A thank you as well, as always, to yourselves for all the awesome feedback, banter and shares. The podcast uh, wouldn't be doing as well as it does in its own little bubble and its own little way if it wasn't for you guys. And I do really, really appreciate everything that you're doing, you're sharing, you're commenting, you're, you're kind of feeding back and you're bringing in your friends, club members, uh, family, you name it. I'm just, I'm really appreciative and I, I don't think I'll ever be able to convey that in its uh, full sincerity but we'll move on uh, before I get emotional. Just just thank you very much, everybody. Um, long may it continue, uh, but we'll cover that later in the episode. Before I get too far away from the start of the episode, let's get to the intro. The Point 99 podcast is a podcast made by runners for runners. If you're new to running, we hope to have topics and discussions that will help you along whatever path your journey is taking. Or for any seasoned runners, maybe some stories that will have you empathising with our experiences. Whether it's lessons we've learned during our own journeys, embarrassing stories or heartstring pulling moments, we hope you'll stick with us while we try share some good vibes motivation and positivity and hopefully we can have a laugh along the way. In a change to the usual format that I run I'm gonna take a slight sidestep from any events or how my week has been in any great depth being that it is still pretty low on mileage since Amsterdam especially given how atrocious the weather has been and now the change of the clocks uh, makes the idea of heading out after a drive home from the office into the cold, into the dark, a little bit less appealing. So my mileage is low. At the same time, it is worthwhile taking my time to come back after the serious amount of training, pressure and everything that goes into running a marathon. Just 
take baby steps back into it and I'm not going to lose any great fitness from it. And I am still turning the legs over. I'm still running on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and the plan is to still get my longer runs in on a Sunday. But at the moment, it's just, as I say, turning the legs over, no particular goals and no PBs being pushed. On the topic of events as well, I didn't see anything appear on my radar. I've not really been on Insta as much as I might be on any given week. No reason other than just being busy. Um, but from what I have seen, I didn't see that much in the way of events. Um, so there's nothing for me to cover. There's a lot coming up this weekend or at least one quite large event that I am aware of. So I'll cover that at the end of the episode and we'll be talking about that next week. Instead, however, I'm going to put a question to you all before I get on to the interview, of course. So like me, there are quite a few runners out there who have partners, spouses, husbands, wives, whatever you want to call them, who suffer for the sakes of our life choices as runners. We're talking in this case and particularly in my case about marathons and ultra marathons. My question to you, and I'm going to put this out on social as well, but no matter the suffer, the travel, the costs financially, physically or mentally, do you or they have any perks, no matter how small, that they look forward to as part of either the process as a whole or the final event itself? I do have an example here to make it easier for you to think about, though i I'm thinking it could be something as simple as the idea of a few days away, depending on the event's location, maybe a nice hotel, the the accommodation as a whole, the shopping opportunities, the sightseeing opportunities, whatever it might be. For my wife, it could be all or none of the above. It really does depend. The thing that never changes though is that one special perk that comes at the end of the marathon evening after a week-long carb loading session, heavy, bready, doughy meals, where you can finally let your hair down, let the guard down and try something new that isn't going to adversely affect your training or the big day itself. For the Edinburgh Marathon in 2022, my first marathon, And earlier this year, when I returned to face my demons and um, come back with a a more shiny, happy uh, outlook on Edinburgh as a whole, it it came in the shape of curry and barbecue. Living so rural in the Highlands of Scotland, there are few opportunities to really explore world cuisine. I mean, it is improving, but there are still a ways to go. For my wife, however, it has been as much of a celebrational treat for me for completing the marathon as it is for herself, for putting up with me being awkward throughout the whole training process. Fair to say in 2022, I was feeling pretty low at the end of the marathon Um, Where we were staying was a 40 minute walk from the Korean place. We could have got a taxi, but we decided we would walk. I said it was okay. And I loved it. Oh, it was great. But I maybe didn't enjoy it as much as I could have done because my mind was elsewhere with the disappointment. Unjustly so, of course. But um, we did return again this year. We loved it that much. So that when the opportunity arose, she she got it booked in and it turned out it was only five minutes walk away from this year's hotel. So it was a no brainer and it was an extra little perk my wife needed. For Loch Ness, being that it was a home event for us and we were hosting a few of the traveling tribe, we wanted to showcase what we did have on offer that was a little bit different. Um, It is limited. We do have a lot more since the, this uh, event took place, but we took them to a kick-ass Turkish uh, restaurant. 
for one of the group. It literally did kick their ass. It wasn't um, a good result the next day. But for the majority, they seemed to really like it. It was a little bit of a difference from the norm. For Amsterdam, however, it's fair to say that it was a costly weekend. So much so that I probably could have booked a nice weekend or a nice week, in fact, away in an all-inclusive uh, somewhere on the Med. But still, the hotel was a great reward. It was luxury to find, as well as the, the, the flights being spot on. But the cuisine post-marathon that my wife found was a Chinese hot pot, a concept that I didn't know much about before she found it online. So that's the little treat that my wife looks forward to. And I do as well, I have to admit, at the end of the marathon process. Once the marathon's done, no matter how it's gone, it's just that nice little treat to look forward to. Once you've had a shower, once you've had a change and a little bit of a rest, get back out to try something new away from all those safe foods that you've stuck with throughout the training process. Maybe have a little bit of spice, maybe have something that you've maybe not tried before, but let your hair down and just really relax and enjoy the end of the journey. But that's the perks that make a lot of the costs, the grumps, the groans, the time alone while I'm out running, however many miles, make it makes it all worthwhile for her. So that's my open question to you all. But it's also for those who maybe don't have a spouse currently or significant other. It's open to everyone. Let me know what are those little treats, those rewards that make everything that little bit more worthwhile at the end of the process. Something a little bit different to mix things up and get a bit of a different feedback loop going. But that all being covered, let's get on to this week's guest. Today, I am once again joined by a returning face to the show. But this time around, I have the pleasure of dedicating an episode all for her. Even though we recorded this chat well over a month ago, it has stood up really well, especially against everything Hannah has thrown herself into recently, as well as over the past 12 months. I'm joined today by not just any returning guest, but a true legend of the world of adventure, a survivor and a conqueror of the Loch Ness 24. But that's not all. Since her last visit, she has gone on to co-host her very own successful podcast, The Adventure Blether, where she shares incredible stories and insights from her world of adventuring, as well as those of her co-host and guests. I am, of course, joined by the one and only Han Van Ventures, Hannah Kibble. Hey, Hannah. Hello. <laughs> it's so good to be back. Good to have you back. I just said, like, you were on about guests being nervous. I was like, why am I nervous now? I'm back on the other end of it. And we're kind of like nine episodes in of our own podcast. Because like, you don't know what's coming. That's it. That's true. That's you don't true. know what's coming, but then neither do I. Um, okay. <laughs> we're going to play it. We're going to tr- really go um, go loose here and just take it easy, I suppose. Gonna and turn just, into a blather, obviously. Yeah, I think so. I think so. You're all good though? Yes. Good. Thank you very much. Just back from a, another holiday in Scotland. <laughs> Wasn't meant to be, was it? No, it was meant to be Cornwall <laughs> again. <laughs> and it didn't happen. Oh. We looked at the weather. It was like 50 mile an hour winds down there, which I know Scotland got as well, but we've got friends in Scotland, so we know that we've always got an escape plan. They're always happy to see us, and obviously we're always happy to to call in on the way past. So it was, um, yeah, I was just like, do you know what? We need to just accept that we've got four dogs and Cornwall isn't the place to go when you've got four dogs. We, we have to accept our life choices. <laughs> <laughs> this is the pep talk I'm giving Steve before we set off. <laughs> well, for, for context, Hannah actually sent me a message on, was it the Saturday? Was it Could the front yeah, so it was the day you, you were meant to be arriving in Cornwall. And I, I got a message on WhatsApp with a photo saying, oops. <laughs> <laughs> I 
um, or it happened again or something like that. And I just turned to my wife and I'm like, that's not Cornwall. That's Inverness. And she's like, what? That's the they, they took a wrong turn. She goes, how can you go the wrong way to Cornwall? She wasn't getting that. I was meaning it was, it was deliberate wrong turn. She's like, how could they get it so wrong that they ended up in Inverness and not in Cornwall? But because yeah. I'm sat nav only goes north. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you love it up here, and I mean, good reason too. I mean, is it the best place to be? It is. It's it's just my happy place. I don't know if it's because of like spending ten years of my youth there, or if it's it is just because of the things that I love doing now and enjoying the outside so much it's I don't know it just gives you that headspace and just I just feel instantly happier the minute I drive over the border I mean there's no real hills to climb in Cornwall there's plenty of beaches to go and visit and you love a good beach and a good dip but there's no hills the docks are banned from most of them that was what was putting me off (laughs) I was like I'm not going to Cornwall and then making the dogs sit in the van it's just not fair it's a long way to go to yeah to subject them to that yeah and it was like Steve's like I'm not I'm not looking forward to spending a week in a tin can <laughs> with with four dogs and it raining consistently. I was like, yeah, let's let's go north. <laughs> At least you didn't bring the rain with you, so we know we can rule out the fact that you maybe didn't bring the rain for the Loch Ness twenty four. Yes, definitely, that was not me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say it was Al because he had the rain and and he brought the rain up to Fort William, and by the time he got to us, that's when the rain started. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe we should. I'm, just happy. I'm not getting the blame. No, no, I, I shouldn't blame anyone. I, I blame myself actually because I pro- after all those photos, everyone thinks they're photoshopped from the year prior. Um, I can confirm they were not photoshopped, but I think you neither were this it. year's. There wasn't a hose on. It was literally just that wet. <laughs> oh. What was it? Friday night till probably. Actually, no, morning. my last my last lap, I think it started to dry up. When I say dry, I mean there was a brief moment in the clouds where it wasn't lashing it down. <laughs> yeah, I got a couple of dry laps and then it rained again. <laughs> uh, see, I didn't go back out after that. <laughs> I was done. <laughs> that, was, that was the wise decision. Uh, I, I think by the end of it, there's a, there's a really good photo. I love it. It's a black and white photo of, of myself and Lorna coming back and kind of seeing Ben off. But... The, the the photo from when I started to when I ended, it just looks it looks like we've gone through a whole battle for years. I just look drained. <laughs> um, but that was just the rain. That was constant beating of the rain. But you were, of course, the the savior from the get go, the only sensible person in out of the team of twenty three people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I kept saying I'm good at the camping, rubbish at the running. Well, so- you're not rubbish at the running either, though. Well, no, I'm apparently I'm a runner now. Did you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very much so yourself and um, Susan um, painted a, a, a great uh, account from from what you've achieved from effectively being five k runners, if that, yeah. to how far did you end up smashing? Couch to twenty eight k in <laughs> <laughs> with three weeks worth of injury. <laughs> Oh, he did. He did so well. I only, I unfortunately didn't get. I, I'm, I'm going to say I didn't get a chance to run with you. I had a perfect opportunity to run with you and with Emily, but I decided to do a road runner and meet meet past you. <laughs> I know that was so rude. <laughs> but no, you did. You did do really not to like blow smoke or anything, but to to go from nothing to twenty eight k is phenomenal, especially in those conditions. And you didn't fall and like injure yourself or. Having you know also had the injury going into it. Yeah. The, so I I had a bit of a calf thing going on for pretty much three weeks before. And I was going to go and do a little test run, Um, I think, on the Wednesday or the Thursday. But for whatever reason, I was running late and packing everything. And I ended up setting off on the Thursday night. So I just didn't get a chance to even run. So I didn't run a single mile or a single kilometre for three weeks before I went. But I was like, well, you know what? I'm just gonna just gonna go for it. And I think if I hadn't have had to drive myself home after it, I probably would have pushed that little bit harder. But unfortunately, my hip had gone, and I've had this particular hip pain before. And I was like, do you know what? If I keep going, I ain't driving home. And the one thing that people kept saying to me before I left was, "Don't break yourself." 
was like, advisable not to. Yeah. Well, I was like, I can't make those kind of promises. <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> I mean, it's not as if the podcast doesn't have history of Hannah's going and not training and then just going and running at marathons or something. So, um, you're you're in good company there with your fellow namesake. Yes, I do remember that that particular episode and thinking, what a legend. <laughs> <laughs> I it, it, it think of like... other things to call her. Um, legend <laughs> is one of those, but other I, other words as well. I don't think it was even once or twice, wasn't it? Like about four times. Four yeah, or five it was like times. four or five times. She's only recently learned to start training after she's like broken herself many, many times. This is definitely a Hannah thing, because even when I was telling the physio about my calf and she was like so what have you done I was like explaining and I was like yeah and then there was this other time that I did this and then there was another time that I did that and she went I'm starting to see a pattern I went oh, yeah when I say it out loud I get you coming from so yeah it was um it was interesting so it actually wasn't my calf that was my problem it was my hip unfortunately and I have had it before and I just knew I couldn't I couldn't push through it unfortunately, because my head was still in a good place. And I was so determined to keep going to that point that I had to mentally push through. Like I actually wanted to get to that point where I was struggling and having to have a word with myself. And I didn't get there because I was having too much fun running through the mud. <laughs> and you, <laughs> like stay, you, the- did, you did stay pretty positive for, for the duration, even to the point where you'd been the saviour, you brought the only gazebo that we had, uh, the inflatable, yeah, it had a few leaks, and yes, I tried to gas everyone in it. And it was yes, leaking. it was the amount of condensation in there. <laughs> I was going to say, and condensation, as Nick quite regularly pointed out. <laughs> um, but you were the savior that brought the the tent that could have so easily have been more of a social space, but ended up being everything, including a social space, including the, the dumping ground, the eatery. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The, the just the general data crunching headquarters, and then not only that, you saved the day with Mike and Heather when their van inevitably decided, "No, nah, I'm I've, I'm done." Mike was broken, so the van must break too. <laughs> and you had to that. charge that up. Yeah, it was. It was. Oh, how are we gonna? How are we gonna jumpstart this van? Because my car isn't powerful enough to do it. And <laughs> we kind of all just looked at you, and you had to phone Steve and. Yeah, we can fix that issue. I think I remember this conversation. I was like, right, my other half has a habit of keeping loads of stuff in the van that I'm like, we don't need that. We don't need that. Why is that (laughs) in there? And then I was like, I had to eat my own words. And I was like, love, any chance we've got something that can like start another van? And he was like, yes. I was like, great. How do I use it? (laughs) Bless him. He's good at talking me through it. And he's like, right, go to the inverter, do this, do that. And I was like, Okay, I can do this. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, so double double saviour. Oh, Super yeah. Smasher 28K, Couch to 28K <laughs> and saviour. I think that was the thing that kept me going. It was like Couch to 28K. I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm starting a whole new thing. And that's encouraged you now to go and do something else super crazy, hasn't it? Yeah. I was like, I want to see what I can do with some actual training. <laughs> let's face it well no to be fair so going back you'd actually done me a really good little training plan and I was sticking to it and I was doing really well and even just after four weeks I felt I don't know how to describe it I just I was feeling a lot more confident about Loch Ness 24 and actually managing it yeah and I did um I think my, on the plan I was supposed to do 9k and I'd sort of misjudged um my my run that I did Um, And I ended up doing 10. But I was gutted because, like, I felt really good. I didn't feel like I was dying. I wasn't out of breath. (laughs) Just my calf that let me down, which is a shame because up until that point, the plan that you'd put together was really massively helping. So going on to now, um, we had a guest on episode six. He was the first male guest that we had. Um, Ben Turner, the adventure coach. I've signed up with him for, um, it's a 24 week, um, not, it, it is a challenge, but there's the 12 weeks of challenge, um, which are making you not necessarily physical challenges. They're just kind of making you think about things. Um, last week's one was quite, it was a really good one actually. We had to eat 35 different fruit and vegetables at, through the entire week. 
Oh, that's good. I thought you were going to say you had to eat 38 different kinds of insects. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I would not be that's that. That's okay. Yeah, that, that's, that's fairly easy to achieve. It is fairly easy to achieve. It was a lot harder trying to achieve it when we were in the van, though. And we were in the school box. <laughs> in the middle <laughs> like, of nowhere in Scotland, yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, this would have been so much easier if I was at home. But it still made me think about it. And I ended up eating um, a bit more kind of fruit than I'd I wanted to eat lots more veggies because I'm still obviously conscious that fruit has a lot more sugar in and mm -hmm. I was trying my best to, to do it, but I managed it and I was really chuffed with myself. Um, and then I think, I can't remember what challenge one was. Oh, that, that was it. This, I really liked this one. So challenge one was to think about where you were a year ago, where you are today and where you want to be next year. And I was like, the particular day that you sent it out, <laughs> I was like, so this time last year, I was actually stood on the top of Ben Wivis. <laughs> and I was like, and the reason I know that was because it was, um, we'd gone up for my birthday week. And I was adamant I wanted to do this particular walk on the Isle of Skye. And the weather turned horrific. It just wasn't happening. And I was, I remember it because of how much I was having a tantrum about it. <laughs> literally was having a tantrum I was like I want to do this walk I want to go and do this and Steve's like look the weather's not safe and I was like I'll go and do it on my own which is when I know that I'm not in a good place mentally when I start making silly decisions like that and Steve's trying to stop me for my own safety but I couldn't see it at the time I was just adamant I wanted to do that um so yeah 12 months on I'm in a lot better place but it makes you think about Actually, I didn't think I was that bad back then. But when I think how far I've come in the last 12 months, I've come a long way. Most of the time, I've had a little blip this week, I'll be honest. I've taken a break off social media and it was what I needed. But I've really enjoyed the break as well. That wouldn't that wouldn't be life. It wouldn't be true life if if you didn't have a few dips. It's not all peaks all the time. Exactly. And you know, I try and keep my page as real as possible. If I am struggling and I can't, I'm not in a place I feel I can share that, I just don't share anything. I don't start sharing fake smiles and making my life out to be something wonderful that's not. I'll take that step back. And then when I feel I'm ready again, I'll then explain, right, this is what happened. I've acknowledged mm -hmm. it. I've worked through it and I'm moving on. Yeah. And it's okay to do that. Yeah. Um, but it's also so, better than just having a negative and just posting negatively every day as well, because yeah. you, you do regularly, most days, most days you share what you've been doing over the weekend and, and sharing that joy over the course of the week before you then you look forward to your next weekend. But you don't want to then be doing the opposite of going, oh, no, it's not all working because that's not you. But then no. you have to come back and say, yeah, I wasn't having a good week and it's OK to not have a good week. Yeah. And it's like you don't want to. You don't want to focus on it. You don't want to overpost the negativity too much because you kind of almost get into that mindset of, oh, I'm miserable and mm -hmm. life's rubbish. And and then you're kind of looking at it. So it's good to have a little reminder of that you had that blip because then when you look back on your, your stories and you think, oh, yeah, I got through that. That was yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, if you post too much, then, again, it's just it's it's in your face and you kind of almost start believing that you are miserable whereas I tell myself I'm not even when I am sometimes it's like you are what you eat in a way isn't it so yes. you're now 15 types of fruit <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I'm like rainbow yeah. <laughs> so what's this week's challenge then um so this week's challenge is a physical one um we've got a, a set um we've got to do a one mile run and then a few different um I, um exercises and then another mile run but we've got to time it and see how quickly we can do it so I think it, is it like press-ups and burpees and squats and lunges yeah, yeah all the stuff I hate <laughs> my coach used to make me do that and it honestly I hated it at the time but looking back it's like you're the year looking back a year I've not had my coach in a few years now but I look back and he created great foundations for me so he still comments on a lot of my good stuff um, all my PBs and that, and he, he's he's really the the biggest driving factor. He created the foundations, and as much as I look back and go, I didn't really like doing that when I was doing it. The mile run as fast as you can, and then coming back absolutely destroyed, and then having to do some burpees. 
yeah. I hated it at the time, but it was it was what I needed to, to help me to get to where I am now. Yeah. So last week we had a, a similar thing. It was do a mile run and then it was like 50, 50 squats, 40, I can't even remember what, 40 of something, 30 of something and 20 of something. I can't even remember what it were. Um, but I did it around Clash Woods in Muravod. Ah. lovely I am it is my new favorite place to go running I'm like I just need to move here so that I can just run that <laughs> because I really enjoyed it mm. and I was just I was led on the floor in the, in the woods doing all the like sit-ups and stuff and the dogs like stood over me looking at me going what are you doing <laughs> I'm not gonna say it's a bad decision to move up here it'd be cl- I'd have more people closer <laughs> <laughs> oh. My friend actually messaged me went, how many times have you been on Right Move this week? I was like, every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing. It's going in the air. I've got other friends that want to move up from, from Kent. Um, so it's it's in the air. I, I think uh, there's a few people know, knowing now that this is the place to be. Yeah. I just, oh, it, it's so scary. I'm like, every time I look, I'm like, I really want to do it. And <laughs> I was so, do you know what? I was almost crying when we drove home yesterday. I didn't actually, but I was close. And I was like, I just don't want to go home. I want to stay. And With benefit, just, you'd be cheaper though. Less money on fuel. That's true. The amount of time we spend there, if I actually factored that into like, you know. You could buy a house. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, that's quite a good way to look at it. I'm thinking, mm. you know, that's a chunk of money towards a, a mortgage. Yeah. I like your style. <laughs> So then you've got after this is week three. Then you've then got yes. a, a good few number of weeks of mixture of physical and um, I wouldn't say mental, but um, there is quite problem a bit of, solving yeah, challenges. Yeah, there's a lot of um, mental resilience um, mm-hmm. as well um, with Ben. He's you know he doesn't just give you a plan and send you on your way. He checks in every week. Um, with everybody we have a coaching call every Wednesday focusing on a group thing that maybe everyone's struggling with Um, so like we focus on nutrition or focus on mental resilience and so far I know we're only three weeks in but I'm really enjoying it and we know we've been given the plan on what we need to work to which is great fitting it in around everything else that we've got going on and I love it because it's event adventure based it's like Saturday's thing is like, right, three hours on an adventure, get yourself out there at the weekend. It's not go and run hills, go and, go and do this, go and do 50 sit-ups. It's, it's all based around being outside and being stronger for doing that sort of thing, which is just right up my street. <laughs> Saturdays are your Bilbo Baggins days. You're going on an adventure. <laughs> Get your kit, we're going on an adventure. And the best bit is, Steve gets to join in with me. Oh, I, d- I just on. hope that because it's adventure based and he's building up your mental resilience, it isn't like the final week's not going to be like a Bear Grylls week where it's going to be like eat a spider and drink your own wee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got another, what is it, 12, then in our 12 weeks of. Yeah, so learning the, to do to make other people eat spiders and drink them. We? <laughs> yeah, so the first twelve weeks is all challenge based. So there's something each week to keep us going, as well as all the um, strength and conditioning and, and everything else that we've got going on. But then um, I think we've got two or three weeks where we're still accountable over Christmas, but it's not going to be like a massively restricted thing. It's go and enjoy Christmas, but sensibly. Mm-hmm. And then come January it's one-to-one coaching for whatever crazy idea I've cooked up by the 1st of January, which could be anything, not in me. Um, First one's I want to do the West Highland Way, um, which I am hopefully going to do with Emily um, from Clark's Family Adventures. And Steve wants to come and anyone else that wants to come, but we're doing that in May. Um, I would absolutely love to do the Cooling Ridge on the Isle of Skye. Because that just looks epic. I'm so, so intimidated. Oh, weather dependent, though, isn't it? That one. Yes, I'm so intimidated by the the cooling mountains, but also super excited that I just I can't wait to do it. Now tell me, is that the one that Danny McCaskill took his bike to the top of <laughs> it one is. of the ridge? It is. Yeah. yeah, he came down um, Dub Slabs, which comes down to um, Loch Crisk, yeah. and it's just stunning. I won't be taking my bike down it, don't worry. 
<laughs> that is not my thing. Um, and then I did a paddle on Lake Coniston, um, did like eight miles. And I was like, oh, this is really good. You know, I want to do a paddle adventure now. So I looked at how far it would be to paddle from uh, Fort William to Inverness. And it was like 96 kilometers. So I was like, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> I know someone has, they've kayaked it. They kayaked all the way up the canals and... Yeah. Uh, but then it, the weather got really bad and they couldn't do the lock. So they had to come back and do the lock afterwards. So oh, that okay. would be really good. But yeah. I think the thing with with doing Loch Ness, it's that long. That would be really demoralizing yeah. <laughs> to me anyway. So Loch Ness, the you'd have to start Fort Augustus in the morning because mm. I have done a little bit of research into it, but obviously I'm debating the idea of maybe getting a guide for it yeah. um, and I've got someone in mind um, but if not so Loch Ness is very rocky at the sides there's actually no exit points um, for kind of like maybe the f- first half it's mm. it's really quite bad um, maybe on and- the south side is better you can't really do the north side but you could do the south side yeah um, but yeah it's I've seen it when it's been windy on there and the waves, someone told me the waves can actually be two meters high on mm-hmm. Loch Ness. And I was like, yeah, definitely need a good weather window for that. <laughs> not 24, not, not the 24 weather window anyway. Although the, the, the waves were kind of calm there. Yeah, they, weren't they weren't too bad. bad. They weren't too bad. Um, especially while they were all Nessie hunting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know how that went. I didn't hear any good news about it. I think Annika ran in at one point, seeing if she could find Nessie. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so that's at least that's, that's a lot to look forward to. And, and it's great that it's a good mixture as well, as you say, mental resilience, but also strength and conditioning and getting you in a good habit. Because a lot of, of where your hip came from and the calf came from will come from probably as much as you're out walking and, 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 and climbing and stuff a lot. You need a good base of strength and conditioning and, and good habits. Now, yeah. I don't have good habits during the summer. I, I only do them in the winter. Um, and that's how I got in the position I got into with Edinburgh. But touch wood. <laughs> I've been okay. I've got two weeks to go. I should be okay. Um, I've got in a good position. So this time next year, you're in a very similar position to the way I was the year before I started marathon running. Yeah. So you could, it could be you, as an old lottery symbol was. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would love to do an ultra as well. I still just don't have any inclination to do a marathon. It just, it but doesn't. You, you've got inclination to do an ultra, but not a marathon. Yeah, You're just I, know. Gonna bypass, I know a number of people bypass it. That's, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, so when I came home from Loch Ness, I did actually go on. Like I was like, oh, I, you know, I enjoyed Loch Ness. I really, really enjoyed the experience, but I'm not bothered about doing events. I'll just go and run a 10K on the, on a trail that I've kind of made up thing. But then I did actually start looking at like 10K trail runs near mm-hmm. me. And there was one, I think the week after at Malham. And I was like, oh, that's like one of my favorite places to go. Maybe I should go and do it. And I just thought, hmm. It's only a week after and my calf yeah. was still just a little bit tender. And I thought, I'm going to be sensible. But yeah, I, I was here's me going, yeah, 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 I'm not bothered about events. And then came home and started Googling them. That's the effect of that medal. It was radiating energy into you, saying, <laughs> get me some friends. So yeah, that's going to be next year. And I, I mean, your location is really like spot on for finding other events. Yeah. Especially like not just local little community events like i i've kind of got sizable trail events festivals weekenders um there's a lot going on in the lakes and i'm lucky that the lakes is only an hour to two hours away so yeah Mm -hmm. i am quite lucky and then to be fair i haven't looked at any of the wales ones but even wales is only two to three hours away so and you've got the van i've got the van yeah (laughs) So it's good. It's good to know we didn't scare you off. The weather didn't scare you off, and you, as I say, you did smash it. So the weather was least of my worries. I was like, I, I genuinely was loving. I mean, there was that one bit where it was quite steep, and it was kind of almost like a hairpin bend. 
Do you, do you know the bit? You know the bit because Laura, that was the part that Lorna described it as absolutely flying down, just sliding around the corner. And just like, she has no idea how she didn't like fall and hurt herself. <laughs> that was such a I, I That was probably a good 20 centimeters deep in mud on quite yeah. a steep section and the corner to navigate getting round as well. But I was loving it. It was, I just wish that, I think my problem was I got carried away on my first lap. Went too quick. Away, mm-hmm. And went off too quick. I mm-hmm. think I should have started much slower and I maybe would have had more of a chance. But the other thing I remember as well, I'd taken the insoles out of my trainers the week before because, not sorry, not the week before, the last run that I'd done, I'd got a blister and I looked at my insoles and I'd, basically rubbed a hole in my insoles um on the arch so I'd taken those out put the original ones back in and I think that was part of the problem with my hip pain when I started wearing insoles the hip pain stopped however I have just bought some new trainers because my innovates are wrecked after Loch Ness 24 um but I've gone for zero drop and I've got some is it ultra Ultra? yes as soon as you said zero drop ultra and yeah. I'd listen to it. I'd listen to the What the Fartlet podcast because they had Ultra on and they kind of extolled the virtues of Zero Drop. And then they were actually at, at, at Loch Ness at the weekend. And Lee's like, What are those shoes? What are Ultra? And I'm like, They're Zero Drop shoes. The guy, like, when he when he first developed them, ripped the soles off, off a different pair of shoes and like redesigned them so they're Zero Drop. And they're meant to be like phenomenal. Well, so I wear the Vivos um, pretty much all day, every day, but I, I'm not on my feet a lot for, for my job. I'm, I'm sat down at a desk, but I do have my Vivos on a lot. And I wear my Viva walking boots, um, if I'm taking the dogs out, up to kind of maybe five five K or five mile at a, a top, top end. But I, I think I tried to transition too quickly um, back in January and I did like 11 mile hike. And they crippled me because of the zero drop. I think I had an issue with um, my Achilles tendon. And unfortunately, I I, I went at it too quick um, and kind of had to then go back to normal shoes for probably about six weeks while it sorted itself out. So I've still got my innovates for the longer runs that there's just a little bit of life left in them. <laughs> but I am going to try these ultras and comfort wise. They feel amazing. I've been wearing them around the house and I, I wore them for the last few days of my holiday as well, um, just consistently, but I haven't actually run in them yet. So that'll be probably tomorrow. So I'll have best to let you know how I go on. Yeah, best of luck on those. That, it may be exactly what you need, though, because shoes can make such a big difference, especially heel drop. Um, I know it throws me off, but you said you, you, you have said there something that proves you are a runner now. You went off too quick. And that's what all runners do. <laughs> we all go off too quick. Um, I think but, I did use that phrase for about a week. I was like, I'm a runner now, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You are. You were a runner before, but now you've got a medal. You feel like you are a true runner because you did yeah. say that before. You had you had, you had had high expectations on your medal Monday. You were like, no, this is my medal Monday. Don't You can't take it away from me. <laughs> I don't. But the thing is, why... Like whether you run once a week or like five times a week, why do we have this thing about I'm not a runner? Like, what is it? What is th- it that triggers that you then say you believe you are a runner? I think when you compare yourself to everyone else, though. Um, so for for me, looking at someone who's done a major or done all the majors, I'll go. I'm not really a runner. They are, but in reality, coming up to my fourth marathon, someone who has maybe not done as many events or run a marathon will look at me and go, I'm not a runner because they've done a marathon. And it's, it's just complete codswallop. It's <laughs> <laughs> whether you're running a park run, whether you're jog, walk jogging, you are a runner. Um, yeah. But I suppose medals and trophies and accolades reinforce it. Yeah. It, hel- it, hel- it helps justify I am a runner. Yeah. I definitely want more medals. <laughs> Good. <laughs> good i'll be i'll be waiting to see behind you and all that it comes across on the podcast but i'll be waiting to see behind you having a medal hanger i'm yeah. surprised there's not one there already with the, the glorious 24 medal hanging from it well actually it's, it's it in is front of hung, you <laughs> it's, it's yeah it's hung in front of me because i've got um 
above my computer I've got all photo frames and um one of those IKEA wall things that you can hang stuff on so yeah it's it's sat there but do you have your bit your your number it, still my number is still sat there too <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, for context, I just held it up. You see how good quality that is. That went through the rain. How long? And then you see that one. That did ten kilometers. I forgot to take it off my top. It went through the washing machine. Oops. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's still in good condition, but it does look like the dogs chewed it and shat it out. Um, <laughs> the other thing that is still sat in front of me, which I, you did tell on your <laughs> podcast. <laughs> was that somebody had nicked your trophy. <laughs> I was that person. Hold it, hold it up again. I'm not, I'm just not totally not going to print the screen there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I just casually walked past you and nicked your trophy. No, I wasn't going to take it home. I, I, <laughs> I'd had them in the house for too long at that point. <laughs> oh, you were sick of the sight of them by the time it came to the weekend was I was uh, as much as I loved them and I loved designing them and I loved everything about the weekend oh I needed some space back in my house I needed some mental space back as well um <laughs> so it's once once my next weekend 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 after this one goes I'll be much much happier I'll still be running but I'll at least have some time to um I suppose digest everything that's happened this year um but Talking about things that's happened this year and since you've last been on the show, I mean, literally less than 24 hours after being on the podcast, um, you are now a co-host of your very own and I would say more successful podcast. (laughs) (laughs) It was, um, yeah, one of those crazy conversations. So after we had been on, um, on here last time, Emily and I together, I can't remember why we we rang each other back after us going that was so much fun and we like you know <laughs> that was really cool Emily's like shall we do our own and I went if you can come up with a good name by morning let's do it and that was like t- in my head I was just it was a joke <laughs> anyway I think it came to seven o'clock in the morning and Emily had sent me loads of suggestions for names and I was she like, didn't sleep oh no, this is happening <laughs> <laughs> you literally because you then asked you then contacted me through the day i can't mind if it was yourself or emily like are you free tonight to chat to us yeah uh, okay why <laughs> <laughs> we need to pick your brains <laughs> how do you run a podcast yeah um so yeah i can't even remember there was lots of names flying about and i think Obviously, I had to include the word adventure in there somewhere because we weren't narrowing it down to just running. Mm-hmm. Just because of my, mine and Emily's background being quite, I don't know what the word is, quite wide open to lots of different things. Um, and we just had this idea that we just wanted to get really, really inspiring people, but in lots of different areas because it could just be that one area that sparks an interest in somebody else. and. Mm. I think Emily and I are both really grateful for the community that we've had through Instagram um, and all the different people that we've met. So we we just wanted a platform to share that um, and hopefully spark an interest in somebody. An adventure is a very, very broad brush. It it can cover your runners, your joggers, your cyclists, your mountain bikers, your paddlers, your dippers, your walkers. It it is very, very inclusive to everyone. Yeah. Um and I think it was I think it was me that um mentioned the word bladder. <laughs> I think it was mainly because so when when we go and see my friend, um the one that we stayed with last week, she's got um like the table place mats and it's got all like the Scottish words mm-hmm. on like chicto bladder and all the Gee. great words and I was like it just sprung to me and I was like bladder. So I googled it and I was like I've, <laughs> I've actually got it sat beside me now. Um and it's just used to describe either a person or who regularly and often indulges in fairly inconsequential chatter. And I was like, that's what we do. Every time me and Emily get together, we just blether. And I was like, that is just perfect for us. I mean, after I hit the stop button on the recording last time, we did sit for like another hour afterwards. <laughs> so it, it perfectly summed up 
the yeah. ability that you both have. Well, I, I, I suppose I fueled that a little bit myself, but um, no, it sums you up perfectly. You're both adventure, very much adventure. Although at the moment, because of of um, Emily's life choices, it's mostly running. She's not getting to do as much adventure as she maybe would like to. Yeah. Um, but very much for yourself, it, van life and um, walking and dog life and jogging and running and dipping and covers yeah, everything. <laughs> it covers everything. It does. It covers a multitude of, of angles and it's been going really well. You're, you're, you're doing 10 episodes for the first season. Yes. We have had a little bit um, of a lag just because there's been quite a lot going so on in the background yeah. for both of us. Um, Emily's obviously full on um, training for the Yorkshire marathon. So she's got a lot going on. Um, I'll be out of the way by the time this episode's out. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> so it's actually, by the time this episode's out, the podcast season might be finished. <laughs> yes, it probably will be by then. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, we, we, were, we were trying to do it every second week. We have had one little blip where we've not quite managed that. Um, but it will be out and we will do our 10th episode. Um, and then we're gonna, we are going to have a little break. Obviously, because we kind of jumped into it so quickly last time, yeah. we said now that we've we've learned a lot, um, definitely over the the last however many weeks months it's been, um, we've definitely learned lots, and we want to come back bigger, better, and stronger, in and like much more inspirational and everything else. Like we we're going to plan it a little bit better this time, and not just it, it, it. It gives you a chance to rest, revitalize, plan guests, get them in in advance, almost write what you want you want to cover throughout the whole season. Um, certainly, I only had four weeks off between season one and two. And again, this is the same with season two and three, but it's much, much easier for me to run it solo. Yeah. There was a lot of juggling um, between two co-hosts, editing, sorting guests, and it was flying by the seat of our pants trying to get guests some weeks. And it happened in season two but this time round, everything as far as possible has been pre-recorded so when it comes to the week I just have to do how I'm feeling at the beginning what I've done what the community has been doing and then an outro or something similar to the way I've been doing it but yeah. I, I fully I, like sympathize it's it's not easy yeah sometimes trying to align our diaries um can be a little bit of a challenge but I think Emily and I bounce off each other so well that you know, I really hope that we can, after a few weeks, we can come back with everything that we've learned. And obviously, the other thing we've tried to do, kind of thinking on our feet, because we do cover so many topics, and obviously, I'm more about kind of the van life and stuff, and then Emily's more about the running. We've tried not to have consecutive weeks of runners or consecutive weeks of van life. And I think that was the bit that we just maybe needed to plan a little bit and spread things out so that we're kind of keeping the interest for everybody and not because obviously we do have a very broad spectrum of listeners. I don't, I don't want the runners to get bored of van life and, you know, just trying to keep it. No, I, think I, I enjoy it. <laughs> no, I, I certainly enjoy it. And I, I'm predominantly running and cycling, but I do love, I do love your special guests appearance. And uh, I want more, I want more of those hilarious stories that she brings. Oh. Um, so that's maybe, that's maybe an angle of that's your, 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 third unofficial co-host um yeah. more regular visits from her please she's absolutely amazing i actually got to so i went swimming with her on my birthday and there was party hats there was cake it was amazing <laughs> was there anyone pooing in a weird place no not that i saw <laughs> <laughs> but actually the the first time i did um the first time i rocked up to meet them at a lock that i can't even pronounce and i'm not going to embarrass myself and try um, I met Leanne for the first time and um, she was like oh this is this is Hannah that does the podcast and she she introduces everybody with a little bit of information and I didn't realize but then she went and that's Bryony she's the one that did the jobby car <laughs> 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 park that was really busy I was oh. like, this is amazing she's just as amazing in real life as she is on the podcast it's it's introduced someone like me and to people people like Leanne and beyond that I maybe wouldn't have clicked on yeah. before that because for the most part I am I am following runners um I'm following cyclists but 
she's but super inspirational and she's super life. motivational and so I, i've had a, a little chat with her as well and I, I i um i was telling her how much i enjoyed the the last episode um the, the bonus episode um and yeah she's just such a nice woman yeah she is she's absolutely amazing and what she crammed into it i mean she totally inspires me what you can cram in to a, a summer holiday if you plan it right i was like I can do that. That was one of the other things I want to do. I really want to bivy out on the top of a hill, but I'm definitely not brave enough to do it on my own like Leanne, but she said she'd come with me. So I'm but, excited about that. I mean, she also has little fluffy friends that appear and keep her company. <laughs> That's true. Some of those sheep have really bad attitude, though. Have you, seen <laughs> you? <laughs> mm, you have more experience than that on the, on the West Coast than I do on the East Coast. We don't have so many here, mostly cows. Um <laughs> Oh well, that, I mean that's been that's been really good to have you back, and I I I could talk forever, but oh. I, I'm I'm also conscious that uh, I've been told off that nobody really likes it, or at least my listeners don't like a podcast over an hour. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I given yes. season oh, one ended with like a two hour podcast. Um, yeah, um, I think that was my thing when I was running because obviously I was only just starting out. I wasn't running for an hour to listen to something, so I'd have to split them up over the week. <laughs> or a tip that we've had, and this is a tip for any listeners. If you struggle to listen to the podcast, play it on two times speed. <laughs> I don't know how our French <laughs> contingent do that and still understand a word that I'm saying or exactly, or some of my guests. But yeah, it's it's one and a half and two times speed is something that people do as well. So Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no honestly I, I think overall you've come so far in just the last I don't even know how many months prior to the 24 and having your reservations but also really wanting to get involved to then having the confidence and ability to come up and smash it stay super positive save the day multiple times and then now go away and and sign up like jump out what is effectively out of your comfort zone sign up for something that is really motivational and a grand scheme of things to this time next year the sky's the limits you'll be you'll be a marathon ultra marathon runner which makes you a marathon runner as well because you tick two two boxes at once i haven't done an ultra i kind of have done an ultra but kind of not um so yeah you, you're on you're on the right track and you're staying you're staying positive and happy and um dips and peaks aside yeah you're, you're doing amazingly well to be fair I and um, it was only seven weeks before Loch Ness that I actually eventually caved and signed up wasn't it it might, it might be even closer than that but it, I, think I think it was, was round about and a half, seven yeah because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, obviously I'd kept saying oh I really want to come I really want to come and I was like oh it's a really long way for a weekend and there was lots of like logistical things I was trying to sort out in the background. And I was like, I really want to go. And then I was like, this is really drastic measures just to get another weekend in Scotland. I, and we tried to keep it a secret as well, but that didn't yeah. work so well. We were trying to keep it a secret from Emily. So it was a surprise for her. But she was she a team was leader so of the team that you were going to slot into. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she was so chuffed though when she found out. But she was on a holiday and she's reading through the messages and she's like, oh my God, you're coming. And I was like, I know I was trying to keep it a secret. And I was going to just like rock up and surprise you. But unfortunately, it didn't quite work out. But yeah, it was, um, I think it probably a good, a good thing because then it meant I got to chat to people before I went and it kind of eased some of those nerves as well. Yeah. Um, and I think obviously Leah had kind of picked up that, I was a little bit nervous about meeting everyone. So the minute he rocked up at Tesco, he was like, bring it in. Lee is like, Lee's just a massive hugger. He was so disappointed when Lorna, first time we met him, just gave him a fist bump. <laughs> 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 so if you ever want to wind Lee up, just give him a fist bump. He's a hugger. <laughs> Right. I, I think before, before we go off tangentially and I end up doing a season one, Steve, uh, I'll draw a line under there, but I would definitely love to have you back again. And um, maybe maybe when season two of Venture Blether has started up and uh, really find out how you're how you're how you're truly feeling about podcast life. Um, but also then you'll you'll have finished, probably finished your your adventure 
course. Um, yeah. So we can we can see which direction you're you're really truly going to go towards. Whether uh, it is going to be running. And stronger, I am. Oh, you'll be you'll be you'll be fit. You'll be strong, but it's then what direction you want to take that in because people are full of surprises. You might decide you want to go to triathlon. You might want to go to duathlon. You might want to go running, or you might want to give two fingers to it all and go do something else. I, I like the kind of self-made challenges that i really enjoy that i might just need to get you to make me a medal for it when I <laughs> <laughs> i'll make medals for any just before i do let you go you used to be a snowboarder didn't you am i right in thinking that yeah yeah so when you'd said ben Whippis and silly challenges this is one for you okay since you end up here i end up up here all the time yeah a colleague of mine one year it snowed on the ben so his him and his friend both being snowboarders off they went, got their snowboards, trekked up the up the bend, got to okay. the top, and there was other walkers there, kind of ribbing them, going, "Silly Billy's taking your snowboards with you. What are you gonna do here?" And they yeah. got to the big quarry drop off, and uh-huh. they just disappeared off the edge. What? No way! And oh. all these other walkers were stood like amazed, taking videos and photos. It's a very silly thing to do, being that. That's not a mountain that you do that on, but there you go. It's, it's, a, it's a, a seed sown of a silly adventure. Yeah. I, it's bit, I think, to be fair, I was moving stuff in the loft and my snowboard's still up there, but I haven't been on it, I think, for about six years. But I have actually thought about a little trip to maybe Glencoe next year, if the snow's right. Stick, the bat, stick it in the van, get yourself yeah. up there. Exactly. I've never done a snowboarding van trip before. There you go. What, it's perfect. Space? Perfect. Right. It's been perfect having you back, Hannah. And yeah, I do look forward to, to having you back again, but certainly I am an avid listener, so I am sure I will hear all about it either way. Thank you very much. Hannah is certainly not afraid of trying something new and throwing herself in head first into a new project. By the sounds of it, there is a lot going on there, a lot of lessons, a lot of learning, uh, tasks, etc. But I'll be keeping a close eye. I'm excited to see how things go for Hannah, having written a very early stage entry plan for her before the Loch Ness 24, which she was doing so well with until she picked up a little niggle. But on that topic, she did do amazingly well at the Loch Ness 24. She surprised not only herself, but I think everybody there, they they did not expect her to do as many miles as she did. And that's no disrespect to Hannah. It's just the way that we wrote the Excel spreadsheet, tracked all the expectations. It far outweighed what she had initially planned to do. She absolutely smashed the 24 and smiled the entire time. It was, of course, her first event, her first entry into eventing, and it didn't scare her off. She got stuck in. As I say, she smashed it, and it was such a a nice opportunity to, to once again hang out with Hannah. I've known her for years as we covered in her original recording with Emily, but it's always great to see her always great to spend time with her she is a wonderful character and like i say it's well worth checking out their podcast over at the adventure blether and finding out a little bit more about what the girls have going on so i mentioned at the beginning of the episode when i was getting quite gushy about my appreciation for everything that you guys do for myself and the podcast about what the future might hold for the podcast as a whole. Uh, It's positive news, uh, of course, and some of you may have seen it on Instagram earlier this week, but I will be back for a fourth season, especially given that I have already booked the prime first slot guest already. Not only will I be putting out the question that we've already covered, the little perks that make events worthwhile in the socials that I'll be looking for feedback on so we can cover it in next week's episode. But I will also be once again asking who you want to hear from in future 
episodes. There are a few guests I have on my list that you let me know about last time round that perhaps we haven't been able to get on so far because of scheduling um, clashes or I maybe didn't get the opportunity to reach out to them because I ran out of spaces. But I would once again like to know who you want to hear more about. Of course, my main aim is to bring on guests who are everyday runners like you or I. In fact, if you would like to come on yourself and share your message, share your story, share your goals or achievements, I'm open to that as well. I want to get you guys on. I want to share your stories. I want to hear who you want to hear from, even if that is yourself. I'm open to that. So get in contact. I will have that later next week because I want to get that first question out and not really have too much of a crossover. I want to try to get as much feedback as possible. So it may not feature next week, um, but then going forward, I'm going to keep putting that message out there, finding out who it is important for you guys to hear from or important for me to reach out to and get onto the show. Now on the topic of guests, um, next week's is someone who is a little bit different to those who you may have heard in the past. I'm saying that because it is actually a member of my family. In a change to, kind of, to the norm, um, he doesn't have an Instagram that is dedicated to fitness. He's really at the early stages of his running adventure, but he is a phenomenally quick runner he's taken to it like a duck to water and with our conversation he covers a lot of what i think you guys the listeners have gone through the the worries the difficulties the concerns and overall i'm looking forward to sharing his message his story and the journey that he is currently on we also share a little bit about the club that he has joined in Glasgow, and that's the Glasgow Front Runners. Uh, it's great to learn a little bit more about them because I have seen them at events. I didn't know who they were, what they were about, and just generally the wider Front Runner community. Um, it's great to share a little bit of a message about that. With that being said, my guest next week will be my cousin, Michael. Uh, I am looking forward to, to hearing what you guys think, sharing his message and yeah, he was nervous like every other guest so far. He was nervous, but um, I've really enjoyed listening back to it. I think it's a great message that he's sharing and I can't wait to share that message with you all. I think all that is left to be said is the usual message on how you can get in contact, where you can follow me and draw the episode to a close. As usual, if you want to get in contact, you can do so on Instagram, Facebook, and through the website. So on Instagram, it is the Point 99 podcast, or you can reach out directly to my own profile at Mr. Underscore Steve underscore runs. You can head on over to the website, which is www.thepoint. 99podcast.com and there's a tab there for contacting us. You can head on over to Facebook, search for the Point 99 Podcast, or of course you can drop us an email at the Point 99 Podcast at gmail.com. All very self-explanatory there. At this point, before I line up the outro music, I'm just going to give a big shout to the Press Play and Run podcast. Ryan's currently on his mid-season break, but he has launched a run club on Strava. It is a long run club. It's there to give people the opportunity to run with other people, to stay motivated and to have a group to head out with. They are in the central belt it is glasgow based for the most part i think there will be opportunities for little sub splinter groups to perhaps uh, form i'm not gonna say for sure because i'm not sure myself um that's for ryan and the press play to to really confirm or anything but 
If you are in the Central Bell, if you're in Glasgow, you're looking for people to run with, head on over to Strava, look for the Press Play and Run, uh, and you'll find a little group there. Or I say a little group, a massive group. If you want a little bit more info on that, head on over to Facebook. Uh, Ryan's got a Facebook group for the Press Play and Run. And I'm sure if you send any messages, go over to his Instagram or the page's Instagram, the podcast Instagram, sorry. You'll find out a lot more about that. But I just thought it's a great chance to to shout it out, the opportunity for you guys, the listeners, to meet other runners in your area, head out for long runs, especially given the darker nights, the colder nights, the motivation might be dipping a little bit like it is for me. And these are the sorts of groups, the communities and the great work that will keep you out smashing it, achieving your goals over the winter months. Almost forgot, I almost closed off the episode without covering the event that is taking place this weekend that a number of the community are heading along to, and that's the Glen Ogle 33 Ultra Marathon. I'll be giving shout outs next week to those that are taking part, but as the name would make you think, it is a 33 mile ish ultra marathon that is taking place from Killen to Strathire in Perthshire. I'm pretty sure I've said both of them correctly. Uh, that follows part of the number seven cycling route and the Rob Roy Way. A few members from the community are heading along to either take part or cheer squad. We've got Davey, we've got Elodie, Gary Dempsey, Geese, Karen, Lee... I know Mike's heading along as well with Heather. So fingers crossed for good weather for you folks. I hope you have a fantastic time and I look forward to finding out how you've all got on. Otherwise, that's it for this episode, taking us into the second half of the season. No matter what you get up to this weekend or for the week ahead, I hope you stay safe, enjoy your runs, And you will hear from me soon.